Hi guys, it is finally a fine midsummer day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization on this lovely, I think it is Thursday, July 15th, 2021, somewhere in there, right about the middle of a, a wet, rainy summer <coughs> in the Finger Lakes of New York uh, here on this rare blue sky day before the floods return again and good lord guys it used to be that you know just finding something to rant about uh, was half the struggle now it's editing this is what I'm trying to decide between in one day between the mainstream media and all of these stories my alert listeners are sending to me Number one story on the planet on Yahoo News right now, today, floods devastate Europe, leave more than 20 dead. And we have a quote from Greta Thunberg to kick off today's Chronicle of the Collapse. Let Greta Thunberg explain it to you. We are at the very beginning of a climate and ecological emergency and extreme weather events will only become more and more frequent. Yes, let's just go down. Then we're gonna start with the, today's mainstream media, hit some headlines, and then get to our main story. How about Korean palm oil giant stripped of its sustainability status. This is the Corindo Corporation, one of the biggest, you know, uh, lying sacks of horse manure uh, for years been claiming they are sustainable. They have been kicked off the round table of sustainable palm oil for the simple reason there is no such thing as sustainable palm oil. This is from Axios. I do not believe it. I might have to come back for a fuller rant on this one. Climate solutions could cause their own problems. I do not believe it. Here on Yahoo News, talking about the bright green lies out there. I don't know whether they refer to the book Bright Green Lies, but the mainstream media <clears throat> now letting any clueless moron know uh, that these climate solutions, all they're going to do is create an entirely new set of problems and for any, quote, improvement in the climate end of the impacts, the carbon footprint, that the other ecological imprints of the carbon reductions equal or outweigh. Okay, for every every one of these bright green lies, there are uh, already questionable carbon reduction. Uh, thank you, mainstream media, for sounding like Derek Jensen. All right, several stories on this. I'm assuming Manga Bay will cover this if it's not too late for their publication. Many versions of this. Uh, this one is CBS News. Humans. Humans are threatening the Amazon's ability to absorb CO2, study Warren. So there's this new study out pretty much putting the nail in the coffin to any debate at this point uh, whether the uh, Amazon rainforest is absorbing carbon or emitting carbon. That the Amazon rainforest has flipped from a carbon sink to a carbon source. Uh, anyway, that is the first tipping point of the Amazon rainforest as it continues to tip into savanna. Thank you, mainstream media. Speaking of tipping points, how about global plastic pollution 
may be nearing an irreversible tipping point. Do you think so? Let's take one look at the, uh, the heat wave and drought uh, out in the Pacific Northwest from Reuters News. Wither away and die. U.S. Pacific Northwest heat wave bakes wheat and fruit crops. Do you think so? Uh, <clears throat> there you go about climate change affecting uh, food production. Any one of these could be a full fledged rant, but <clears throat> obviously the uh, chronicle of the day, five of you, five of you have uh, so far sent me this story from Vice News Motherboard, uh, an excellent article written. Oh, this is Nafiz Ahmed. I just realized this. Okay, we haven't checked in with Nafiz in a while, so we are going to uh, hear from fellow doomsday prophet and collapsatologist uh, Nafiz Ahmed, what is on your mind today, Nafiz? I'm going to put the link on here. You can read this yourself, but if you just want uh, to hear one doomer read the uh, obvious conclusions of another doomer, I'm happy to do that for you. Take it away, Nafiz Ahmed <clears throat> from Vice News. MIT predicted back in 1972 that society will collapse this century. New research shows we are on schedule. We are exact, we're probably actually ahead of a schedule. <clears throat> a remarkable new study by a director at one of the largest accounting firms in the world has found that a famous Decades-old warning from MIT about the risk of industrial civilization collapsing appears to be accurate, based on new empirical data. As the world looks forward to a rebound in economic growth following the devastation wrought by the corona panic, the research raises urgent questions about the risks of a simple of attempting to simply return to the pre-corona panic normal. Yes, getting back to normal. Uh, in 1972, a team of MIT scientists got together to study the risk of civilizational collapse. The systems dynamic model published by the Club of Rome identified impending limits to growth that meant industrial civilization was and is on track to collapse sometime within the 21st century due to over-exploitation of planetary resources. The controversial MIT analysis generated heated debate and was widely derided at the time by pundits who misrepresented its findings and methods, but the analysis has now received stunning vindication from a study written by a senior director at professional services giant KPMG, one of the big four accounting firms as measured by global revenue. So what are the limits to growth that we that these doomers are always whining about. <clears throat> the study was published in the Yale Journal of Industrial Ecology in, in November of 2020 and is now available on the KPMG website. It concludes that the current business as usual trajectory of global civilization is heading toward the terminal decline of economic growth within the coming 
decade and at worst could trigger societal collapse by around the year 2040. So in less than 20 years, uh, global industrial civilization and society should have collapsed. The new study represents the first time a top analyst working within a mainstream global corporate entity has taken the limits to growth model seriously. Its author, Gaia Harrington, a sustainability and dynamic system analyst lead at KMPG. Uh, however, she decided to undertake the research as a personal project to understand how well the MIT model stood the test of time. And uh, I would love to interview this woman or, or have been interviewer, but uh, probably ain't gonna happen. Uh, Ben, where are you? Anyway, the study itself is not affiliated with or conducted on behalf of KPMG and does not necessarily reflect the views, you know, of the uh, corporation. Harrington performed the research as an extension of her master's thesis at Harvard. Uh, in her capacity as advisor to the Club of Rome. Uh, however, she is quoted on the website. So apparently Nafiz did not interview her directly. Uh, but quoting Ms. Herring Harrington, quote, Given, given the unappealing prospect of collapse, I was curious to see which scenarios were aligning most closely with the empirical data today. After all, the book that featured this world model was a bestseller in the 1970s, and by now we would have several decades of empirical data which would make a comparison meaningful, but to my surprise, I could not find recent attempts for this. So I decided to do it myself, close quote. Titled, Updates to Limits to Growth, Comparing the World 3 Model with Empirical Data, the study attempts to assess how MIT's World 3 Model stacks up against new empirical data. Previous studies that attempted to do this found that the models worst case scenarios accurately reflected real world developments. However, the last study of this nature was completed in 2004. You know, they uh, did, there, there's, and, and that was a new book, an updated version. So now we're gonna jump start. What is the last 17 years uh, of empirical data taught us about the risk of collapse. <clears throat> okay. Harrington's new analysis examines data across 10 key variables, namely population, fertility rates, mortality rates, industrial output, food production, services, non-renewable resources, persistent pollution, human welfare, and ecological footprint. She found that the latest data most closely aligns with two particular scenarios, the business as usual, two model, and the comprehensive technology model. Uh, quoting her report, uh, these two, you know, the business as usual and comprehensive technology scenarios show a halt in growth within a decade or so from now. Both scenarios thus indicate that continuing business as usual, that is, pursuing continuous growth, is not possible. 
even when paired with unprecedented technological developments and adoption, business as usual, as modeled by limits to growth, would inevitably lead to declines in industrial capital, agricultural output, and welfare levels within this century, close quote. Study author <clears throat> Gaia Harrington told Motherboard that, okay, I guess told Nafis, that in the MIT World 3 models collapse, <clears throat> quote, does not mean that humanity will cease to exist, close quote, but rather that, quote, economic and industrial growth will stop and then decline, which will hurt food production and standards of living. In terms of timing, the business as usual scenario shows a steep decline to set in around 2040. And all of this stuff is graphed out. They have all of these graphs showing collapse uh, according to her model uh, looks like the late 2030s maybe maybe we have 15 years left of kicking the can down the road so the question is the end of growth in the comprehensive technology scenario economic decline still sets in around the date with a range of possible negative consequences, but this does not lead to societal collapse. Unfortunately, the scenario which was the least closest fit to the latest empirical data happens to be the most optimistic. Yes, so uh, the the most optimistic is the one now least supported by the empirical data, is what Nafiz is saying here. Um, this is the stabilized world yes, scenario in which civilization follows a sustainable path and experiences the smallest decline in economic growth based on a combination of technological innovation and widespread investment in public health and education. And of course, that one is a, a joke at this point. <clears throat> Although both the business as usual and comprehensive technology scenarios point to the coming end of economic growth in around 10 years, only the business as usual two scenario quote shows a clear collapse pattern whereas the uh, the technology one suggests the possibility of future declines being relatively soft landings at least for humanity in general close quote both scenarios currently quote seem to align quite closely, not just with observed data, close quote. Harrington concludes in her study, indicating that the future is open and uh, then I am, in, I am very embarrassed to say uh, that Nafi's Ahmed or maybe it's the editors of Motherboard are actually insulting our intelligence with the window of opportunity. I am getting so sick and tired of this window and oper of opportunity crap. Nafis Ahmed knows goddamn well that, that the window of opportunity to save this planet uh, it slammed shut 30 years ago. Nafis Ahmed knows it. Uh, this woman Harrington knows it. Uh, Motherboard knows it. Vice News knows it. Uh, Sancho Panza knows it. Uh, the, the, this little happy ending 
uh, Hollywood ending uh, on, on this breath of uh, reality, it really makes me want to puke. I am so sick and tired. The words window of opportunity, uh, the biggest lie, the biggest bright green lie of, uh, of the 21st century uh, at this point is, is that the window of opportunity uh, little cliche. Uh, it, it is the single biggest lie, and, and, and Nafis Ahmed needs to get the balls to stand up there and say it. Anyway, I need to remember what channel I am on, but let's jump past this uh, hopium apocaloptimistic crap and wrap it up, <clears throat> Nafis. The best available data suggests that what we decide over the next 10 years will determine the long-term fate of human civilization. Although the odds are on a knife edge, Harrington pointed to a, quote, rapid rise in environmental, social, and good governance priorities as a basis for optimism. Yes, signaling the quote, change in thinking taking place in both governments and businesses, yes. She told me that perhaps the most important implication of her research is that it is not too late. It is not too late to create a truly sustainable civilization that works for all. Tell that to the Corindo Palm Oil Corporation. Uh, that was just stripped of its sustainability uh, status. Tell that to the president of Brazil who is now in the hospital because of a bad case of uh, a bad case of hiccups tell that to uh, more you know to the few people who understood that climate solutions could cause their own problems uh, tell that uh, crap to uh, the wheat and fruit farmers in the Pacific Northwest, tell that crap to all of the fish in the ocean as global plastic pollution nears an irreversible tipping point, and of course, tell your crap to Greta Thunberg. Anyway, we're gonna wrap it up here because it is a gorgeous day. And we have a mountain of wood chips that we need to get out there and spread around the uh, hip camp, the muddy trails of the hip camp after the washout this week. We're going to take a former pine tree and make a path out of it to uh, celebrate the sustainable path we're on. We're going to Literally, literally, we're going to create a sustainable path out of a uh, out of a bunt, uh, out of a dead pine tree that was happily growing on the side of a mountain. Right here at Bugs in a Jar Farm, the little dog and I are going to create a sustainable path forward through the mud. I highly advise you get out there and create your own sustainable path while you still can. Bye, guys. Okay, go get your froggies.